Let's travel from Detroit, Michigan, over to Windsor, Ontario, Canada. We're going to Point Pelee National Park. Travel across America with me. Oops, I think we're going on over into Ontario. This is Canada's second smallest national park. But boy, is it packed with lots of fun things to do. They have eight trails ranging from a half a kilometer to six kilometers. There's a whole range of activities from walking to the very tip of mainland Canada, a marsh boardwalk. They even have a cactus trail, a cemetery, a homestead. There are beaches. There's so much to do. I want to show you a little bit about our visit to this park. Our first stop was the visitor center. Of course, we bought a postcard at the gift shop. Mail yourself a postcard. It's cheap and it's a great way to remember your trip. We caught the free trolley that takes you down to the tip. There is no driving to the tip. You can ride a bicycle or hike. The trolley is the best way to get to the tip. Welcome to the tip of Canada. It's on Lake Erie. You can't go out in the water because there's dangerous currents. Unfortunately, many people have died out there, so be safe as you walk out to the tip footpath. It's a partial boardwalk and then trudging through pebbles and sand. You are now just south of the 42nd parallel, as far south as Rome and Barcelona. Some of Canada's rarest plants and animals are found at Point Pelly because of its mild southerly climate. This is a great photo spot. We took a little side trail to this beach area, and it's so nice. It was sort of a glimpse cool day, but it was great. There are storyboards that tell you about the Point Pelee National Park, the Passage, the Lighthouse, and the actual most southern point. It's Middle Island. It's only a 22-hectare island, but this is the tip of mainland Canada. There can be powerful storms in this area of Lake Erie. That's why they recommend that you don't get out in the water. In the spring, Point Pelee's tip is the first landfall for many songbirds flying over Lake Erie at the end of the long night's journey from distant lands to the south. Most stop here to rest, feed, and find shelter from predators before continuing to race toward prime northern breeding locations. We saw lots of shorebirds on our visit. Remember, wading or swimming prohibited because there are dangerous currents. But you can walk out to the tip. Let's go. And as I mentioned, Middle Island is the most southern piece of land in Canada. And it's only a few meters from the Canada-U.S. border. It's not far from Putin Bay. And I'll be taking you to Putin Bay on another great video. What a fun place to go. And it's off the coast of Ohio. Between Toledo and Cleveland, they give you plenty of warnings not to get in the water because of the quality, high bacteria levels, and all kinds of issues. But it's certainly fun to walk out to the tip. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. The views are gorgeous. It is sort of a grueling walk through the sand to the tip, but I made it half the time sandals on, half the time sandals off. I would recommend tennis shoes or barefooting it. This is the southernmost point in mainland Canada. The observation tower at the tip was closed. Whoever had constructed it didn't construct it properly, and it was being rebuilt at the time of our visit. So hopefully when you go, you'll be able to go up to the observation tower and see even farther away. Take some binoculars. You must ride this shuttle during peak times, and it runs every 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I don't really remember, between 10 and 5 p.m. daily. It goes from the visitor center to the the tip. You can walk or ride your bike. The day we were riding the trolley, when he came to pick us up, he said he'd seen an eagle carrying a fish and dropping the fish out on the roadway. And here's that fish. He looks like in really good condition, except for the fact he's dead and out of the water. We had a little over an hour to see more of this great little park. We hiked over to the Point Pelee Cemetery, and we saw these beautiful grapevines. The Point Pelee Cemetery. Brothers Philip and Oliver Delarier lived on these lands in the mid-1800s on neighboring farms. While Oliver's home still stands on the neighboring plot, all that remains of Philip and Jane's homestead is this cemetery. The white crosses denote traditional Euro-Canadian burials. The engraved fieldstones mark human remains that were uncovered in the park in the modern times and reinterred here, according to First Nation tradition. Our next stop, Point Pelee Park. It's the location of the Delaware Homestead and Trail. Step into the past and learn about the people who lived here in the late 19th and early 20th century. This family chose this location for their home as the land was dry and close to both marsh and lake. There are old fields and irrigation canals towards the marsh. Remnants of the past. Lots of pictures and these structures. Today, Today, it takes some imagination to see the houses, cottages, tents, and shanties that once made up the Point Pelee community. There was also a school, a post office, several shops, 
a couple of hotels. This was a close-knit community. Since Point Pelee became a national park in 1918, families have left their homes here. Some were forced to leave. Others were encouraged to go. Our next stop was the Marsh Boardwalk Trail. This is the location of the second of two observation towers, and thankfully this one was open. It provides fantastic views of the marsh. This is also where you can catch a canoe and ride out into the various ponds. This park provides year-round bicycle and hiking trails. We cross back over the Ambassador Bridge to the U.S. and back into Detroit. Give me a like. Please leave a comment below. Welcome to the USA, Pure Michigan. Sandals on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Thank you for subscribing to my channel.